Hi, this is Jonathan. How are you guys doing? In today's video, you're going to talk a little bit about what to look for when you're buying a strap. As some of you guys might know, I'm a fan of the Stratocaster, you know, and if you're in a market for a used or a brand new Stratocasters, these are some of the things you might want to look out for. Now, number one, of course, is the color, you know, um, the whole look of the guitar, you know, uh, whether it be like a blue or black or, you know, vintage or sunburst, you know, whatever strikes your fancy, you know, and these are important because uh, you, you, you want to choose a guitar that you you like that you that you love seeing visually and that will be a part of uh, this whole process of you picking it up and playing it you know no point buying a guitar that is darn ugly and then you're just gonna leave it in the corner of your house you know so that's number one and number two it's the fret radius at the neck you know um, what sort of spacing are you looking for you know all this or uh, will require you either to try out a friend's guitar or to go down to the shop uh, personally and trying out those guitars. Now I know nuts about all this about fret radius and and, and fret width and there are like compound radius you know and stuff like that before. You know I I, I was just a guitar player. I'm still am a guitar player. Um, well I try to be a guitar player. So when I go in the shop, I have no idea of all these things that's going on. You know so I just pick out a guitar and I play and if it feels good I'll buy it. And um, as I was making all these videos, you know, for the past years, I, 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 I uh, stumbled onto all this knowledge about fret radius and, you know, nut width, 
you know, uh, the material of the of the fretboard, you know, all these things. I, I know a little bit about, you know, how fretboard can can alter your sound, alter your tone. You know, like a, a rosewood fretboard as opposed to a maple uh, maple neck, you know, a, a maple fretboard. You know, all this has a part to play in your whole tonal uh, differences in your guitars. And of course, the the girth or the width of you know the thickness of the neck, you know, all these things plays a part. So when you're looking for a strat, these are some of the things to consider. If the nut width is too narrow and you have big hands, you're gonna have all fat fingers. Sorry, you know, <laughs> if you have one of those, and you know, and it's it's gonna be hard for you to finger chords because it's like you know if it's too narrow. On the flip side of the coin, if the uh, nut width is too wide, then you know you might not be able to find it really comfortable to get around strings, you know, um, playing a chord. So you have to find a a comfortable length for you, and there are certain standard size, you know, of a fret or of a nut width. Now the the fret radius, you know, it it, it ranges from the traditional 7.25, if I'm mistaken, all the way up to 13 or even more, you know. The radius of the, the curvature of of the, uh, the, the 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 fret, you know, and if you're if you're choosing a or if you're playing a 7.25, you'll find that it's easier to play chords. You know, everything is there because it's kind of like curve. It's easier to play, but when you're starting to play um, lines and when you're starting to pull a lot on an upper register, you probably fret out, especially above the 10th fret, you know. Or 12, you know, when you're starting to like pull up really, real high, you know, if you're trying to do like an overbend, you'll probably fret out. Now, this is what happened to my uh, Japanese uh, 50 traditional strat. Uh, this has a 7.25 fret radius. So when I when I first picked it up, you know, when I was playing all the high registers, I was fretting out all over the shop. So the only way to uh, to counteract this is probably to raise up the action, which I did. I raised up the action just a little bit, so that I will not fret out and just that's it. You know, and it's not too high. It's it's still playable. So these are some of the things that you might want to consider. And if you are choosing a a, a, a what does like a 9.25 all the way up to 13 uh, fret radius then uh, 30 inch fret radius and then you 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 find that it's easier to play solos or play lines because it's you know the, the curvature is, is is not so curved <laughs> you know it's kind of flat the, the fretboard is kind of flat so it's easier for you to bend notes now most of my guitars from Harley Benton they range from 12 inch to 13 inch fret radius and they are relatively easy to play. Now the next thing to look out for are the frets. You know, you it ranges from the traditional thin ones to the medium jumbos to the jumbos. Uh, for the medium jumbos and jumbos, you find it easier to bend notes. You know, it's easier to bend. And then of course the material of the frets, stainless steel as opposed to nickel. You know, some would prefer the nickel because it has a warmer tone. Some prefer the stainless steel because uh, of its longevity and you don't have to change frets so often. But then it has a little bit of a brighter tone. So all these things you have to consider. And then the nut. And our, our, whether the guitar comes in with a tusk or a, a, a graphite nut or a bone nut or even a plastic nut, some of the cheap ones. And it's up to you, you know. And all these things are interchangeable. You can, of course, change the nut. But to do a refretting, yeah, it's gonna cost a bit, you know. So these are things to consider. Now, the pickups. Pickups are the heart of the guitar. So um, when you choose a strat, you know, when you play it in a shop or when you hear, or when you're playing in a, in a friend's house and you like the sound of it, you gotta know what pickups are these. Uh, are these like uh, the traditional Anico? There are a whole lot of range of Anico 1 and Anico 2 to 5. And then there's the ceramic kit pickups and, and stuff like that. And you know, are you gonna are you gonna pick a single single double, a single single humbucker, or a single 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 traditional, or a double single double? You know, so these are pickup configurations that you might want to consider. But if you're if you're looking at a straight single single single, then are uh, the pickup materials are something that you might want to delve into, uh, do a bit of research into it. And um, for me. You know, the Enicos, uh, whether it regards an Enico 4, four five, or 2, it, uh, it has a distinct sound. It's more, it's a bit scoop, you know, but uh, it has that solid uh, strat sound that, that we all are familiar with. The ceramic, on the other hand, uh, have a warmer tone. And, well, 
I guess the ceramics uh, may be a little bit cheaper to produce, you know, but depending on the grade of ceramics we're talking about. But um, uh, this guitar, this Japanese guitar, uh, Japanese strat has ceramic pickups. And I was surprised to know that uh, the EMGs that I've been using all these years, they're actually made from ceramic. And that's explaining why I'm so uh, drawn to the sound of the EMG pickups because of this tonal quality of the ceramics. Now, the other study you want to look out for are the electronics, you know, um, whether you are opting for a, a, a active pickup uh, configuration or just a passive pickups. And then, of course, the ports and stuff like that, if you're really into that, and if you're really a geek, you know, you want to find out what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, a port are they using, what sort of switch are they using, the switchcraft ones or the cheap ones, and the volume knob, you know, does it roll easily, and what sort of caps they have there. You know, if, if you're just starting to, to play electric guitar or you just don't want to know about this, then fine, just go ahead and buy a guitar that that sounds good, that plays well, that, you know, volume parts work, you know, the tone part works, the switch works, and, you know, that that will do fine. And later on, when you when you have the time and you have the interest to, to dwell into it further, then by all means, go into it. So the next thing I want to talk about is the tremolo bridge. You know, um, you have a choice of, um, of a of a six screw bridge or uh, or a two screw bridge you know and depending on on what make of guitar that you're buying uh, either be a Fender or you know or a Squire or you know some of the Harley Benton ones still come in all sorts of configurations the ones that I bought from Harley Benton those are really nice bridges uh, especially on the Fusion Pro they have the Wilkinson bridges and they are well made you know easy to play uh, the traditional Fender ones are the six the six screw ones, you know, they, they, they are pretty they're pretty neat, you know, and uh, you might want to decide whether to to, to to float it or not to float it. But some of you don't some of you guys out there who don't like to play with a tremolo arm, you'll probably like flush it straight and just want to sound with a stratocaster, you can just flush it straight to the body and you don't have to bother with with whether it's a floating bridge or not. But for those of us who play with floating bridge, these are things to consider, you know, how how well the, 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 the bridge behave because there's so many variables uh, that that will really um, give you a totally bad experience in playing with tremolo arm or uh, the springs you know the the, the the screws itself you know and then of course the net and then uh, like you know when you're playing with a tremolo uh, arm with a, with a floating bridge you know you might just want to play and then the guitar goes out of tune terribly out of tune and most of the time I find that the reason is because the nut will not slot it properly and all you need to do is just to widen the sides of the nut and you'll probably do fine you'll probably be fine on the rare occasion when there's something wrong with the bridge then you might want to see your loose here and, and see what you can do about it the other thing you want to look into is the uh, the shape of the neck and what sort of shape you have, you know, all sorts of shape, U shape, C shape, you know, modern C, you know. Um, I guess the only way to do this is just to play it and, and see how it feels in your hand. Uh, of course, there's the the choice of finishes, like you have the gloss finish or the non gloss satin ones. So, depending on your hand, how much does it perspire? You know, you might want to choose a satin uh, finish because it's more smoother and it's more organic. Uh, in feel or if you're okay with your hands being you know not perspiring too much then um, you're comfortable with a gloss neck then fine by all means go for it um, yeah I guess I cover the bases the tuners you know the hardware and stuff like that you know uh, I guess most most of the guitars in the market right now they have uh, good working tuners and on the off chance that the tuners don't work after a couple of years, you can always swap them out with, uh, with a set of locking tuners or you know, stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to uh, subscribe to this channel, uh, please feel free to go ahead. Press the bell if you want to be notified of any future videos. So in the meantime, you guys take care. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.